Reggie Miller was known as the Knicks killer. Michael Jordan tormented the Cavaliers, and Shaq ruled over the Sacramento Kings. But in all of NBA history, nobody bullied a franchise more than LeBron James bullied the Toronto Raptors. The term LeBronto was coined in 2018, but it all started back in 2005. LeBron scored 56 points in Air Canada Center, which was his career high at the time, and it's still the most points anyone has scored on Canadian soil. LeBron's 56 was also a scoring record for a Toronto opposing player, but that stood for only one year before Kobe gave them the business with 81 points. And, an 81 point game. and then in 2008, King James had another statement game in Canada, but this time, it was all thanks to trash talking. Chris Bosh's girlfriend kept heckling LeBron, while the Raptors built a 20-point lead. But after one missed dunk from James, she got especially sassy, which pissed LeBron off. And a pissed off LeBron means only one thing, big trouble. The King then scored 24 points in the fourth quarter and propelled a Cavaliers comeback, which became the biggest blown lead in Raptors history. Then after the game, he pointed at Bosh's girlfriend and said, it's your fault, they lost because of you. That's cold, LeBron. I see you had a few heckling fans down there. Yeah, they the reason why the uh, Raptors lost tonight, because they uh, ticked me off a little bit. During his first stint in Cleveland, LeBron had a 19-6 record against Toronto. But when he took his talents to South Beach, it went from bad to worse for the Raptors. LeBron and the Heat won 14 straight regular season games against Toronto, and James remained undefeated against the Raptors while he was in Miami. In a nine-year span between December 2006 and November 2015, LeBron lost to the Raptors only twice, which is an unheard-of level of dominance. However, that was all in the regular season, and the real tyranny started in the 2016 playoffs. In 2016, Toronto was a team on the rise. They finished second in the Eastern Conference behind the Cavs, winning a franchise record 56 games. For the first time ever, they won more than 50 games, and what was also unprecedented, they had two All-Stars on their roster a backcourt duo of Kyle Lowry and DeMar DeRozan. Before 2016, the Raptors won only one playoff series in their 20-year franchise history, when Vince Carter led them to a first-round series win in 2001. And then DeRozan rose to the occasion and won Game 7 of the first round against the Pacers. The second round against the Heat offered another thriller and another Game 7. And this time, it was Lowry who led the Raptors to victory and their first berth to the conference finals. The Raptors looked like a serious contender for the first time in franchise history, but they ran into the biggest challenge in the world, a five-time reigning Eastern Conference champion, the King, LeBron James. In the first two games in Cleveland, things immediately went south for the guests from the North. The Cavs obliterated Toronto in both games, and the Raptors never came close to victory. But when the series moved to Canada, Toronto's All-Stars showed that they belong on the biggest stage. In Game 3, Lowry and DeRozan combined for 52 points, and they beat Cleveland by 15. In Game 4, Kyle and DeMar were even better, with 67 points between them, and the series was tied. Raptors fans started believing that this was finally their year, but in Game 5, they had to swallow another bitter pill. The Cavs blew out the Raptors in the first quarter, and the game was over by halftime, as Cleveland held a 31-point lead. The Raptors ultimately lost by 38, which is still Toronto's worst playoff loss ever. In Game 6 in Canada, the Raptors hoped to force another Game 7, but LeBron and Kyrie shut those dreams down. It was another blowout, and the Kings showed that he's in another stratosphere compared to Toronto's best players. James looked like a tank bulldozing over traffic cones, getting to the rim at will. He took 61% of shots at the basket, with an insane efficiency of 82%. Overall, LeBron averaged 26 points on 62% shooting, with 8.5 rebounds, 7 assists, 2 steals, and 1 block per game. DeRozan and Lowry both averaged over 20 points, but Toronto's defense was no match for James and his overpowering drives to the basket. People not realizing like, it's, it's, it's tough to get past this I don't care who you are. In the offseason, all the moves the Raptors made to improve their team were aimed to defeat LeBron James. To stop LeBron from bullying them in the paint, Toronto brought in a super physical wing, P.J. Tucker, and one of the premier shot blockers in the NBA, Serge Ibaka. On top of that, DeRozan and Lowry both improved and averaged a career high in points, notching more All-Star appearances. In 2017, after the Cavs won their first NBA championship, they cruised through the regular season. 
both Cleveland and Toronto finished the season with 51 wins, which set them on a course to meet in the second round of the playoffs. The Cavs quickly dispatched the Pacers in four games, and the Raptors got past the Bucks in six to secure another clash against LeBron. While in 2016, the Raptors still had a happy-to-be-there mentality, in 2017, they had high expectations. But LeBron had other plans. He poured on 35 points in Game 1, scoring from all over the court and securing a Game 1 win for the Cavaliers. In Game 2, same story. The Cavs won by 20, behind LeBron's 39 points. When the series moved to Toronto, the Raptors fans hoped that they could come back as they did in 2016. But even though they got better, so did LeBron, who played one of the best offensive series of his career. The Raptors lost Game 3 by 19 points, and in Game 4, the Cavs completed the sweep. LeBron scored 35 points or more in every game of the series, averaging 36 points, 8 rebounds, and 5 assists for the series. Even though Ibaka and Tucker helped Toronto clog up the paint, it only unlocked LeBron's outside shooting. He was hitting all kinds of contested jump shots, fadeaways, floaters, and he even made a shot with his left hand in Game 3. James shot 57% from the field, 48% from three, and 84% from the free throw line in what was the best shooting series of his playoff career. You find somebody who stopped LeBron, you know, in these moments, and you know, I give you, I give you $100. And he was absolutely right. LeBron was so confident that he'd defeat the Raptors. It almost looked like he was toying when he spun the ball in his hands before he splashed a jumper right in Serge Ibaka's face. The King even drank a beer from a fan during game one. Okay, he didn't really drink it, he only pretended, but it just showed how relaxed and self-assured LeBron was. While the Cavs went on to play another finals against the Warriors, the Raptors had only one thought in mind, how to improve their team and how to finally defeat LeBron. In 2018, Pascal Siakam, OG Ananobi, and Fred Van Vliet all became important parts of the rotation, and the Raptors suddenly had the deepest team in franchise history. This showed in the win column, as Toronto won a franchise record 59 games and finished first in the Eastern Conference. The Cavaliers, on the other hand, were a mess. They lost Kyrie Irving in the offseason, who demanded to be traded. In return, they got an injured Isaiah Thomas, who was half the player he was just one season ago. During the trade deadline, Cleveland traded away half of its roster and had zero stability throughout the year. The Cavs finished the season with the second-worst defense in the NBA and had only the fourth-best ranking in the East. And just like the whole season, the first round of the playoffs proved extremely tough for Cleveland. The Indiana Pacers were a tough and resilient bunch, and the Cavs had to earn every point against them. It was clear that making it to the finals again would be an uphill battle for Cleveland. All-star Victor Oladipo led the Pacers and took Game 1 in Cleveland, despite a triple-double from LeBron. For the Cavs to have any success, LeBron needed to score 46 in Game 2 and 44 in Game 5, including a miraculous buzzer-beating game win. James, two seconds, one second to the win! Uh -huh. LeBron James delivers! Talk to me, there's three seconds left on the clock, you're in the huddle with your teammates, what are you telling them? Just give me the ball. Still, the Pacers forced a Game 7, but the King was just too much, and he somehow managed to win the game with another 40-piece. For the series, James either scored or assisted on 60% of the Cavaliers' points, averaging 34 points, 10 rebounds, and 8 assists, and hitting over 55% of his shots. North of the border, the Raptors finished their first-round series in six games, with much less drama. When they met the Cavs in the second round, Toronto's players were better rested, had more experience than ever, had a deeper team, and for the first time, a home-court advantage. We the North. <laughs> we the North. Uh, this is the year. This is a different Raptors team. They're going to win this series. They got the best bench in the NBA. Well, that's going to come into play. They're going to have three or four bodies that they can throw at LeBron. Toronto was as confident as ever that they could get past LeBron and the weakened Cavaliers, especially after the Pacers almost did it in the previous round. For the vast majority of Game 1, the Raptors were a better opponent, but they managed to squander a double-digit lead in the fourth quarter. Toronto never trailed once for 48 minutes, but LeBron's clutch turnaround jumper in the last minute tied the score and sent the game to overtime. In the OT, the Raptors seemed to do everything in their power to lose the game. They kept missing point-blank open shots, and the Cavs escaped with a victory. Game 2 was close at the half, but quickly turned into a blowout. 
LeBron dominated in a 128 to 110 victory, finishing with 43 points and 14 assists. Before the fourth quarter, the Raptors announcer joked and said, We'll be back to LeBronto for the fourth quarter after this. Soon enough, the term LeBronto was trending. So, the Raptors were once again losing 2 0, and this time, they had to overcome the deficit in Cleveland. In game three, they almost succeeded too. With eight seconds to go, the game was tied, and the Cavs had the ball. LeBron dribbled the ball full court and then took a wild floater off one leg. It was a crazy shot, but it went in. Throws up the floater. Good, Good night, Cleveland. That is for you. It was his second buzzer beating game winner of the playoffs, and the Raptors were now trailing 3 0. After being a better opponent for much of games one and three, no team ever came back from a 3 0 deficit. And with that game winner, LeBron took the Raptors' souls. After game three, the Raptors were so traumatized that they didn't even have the usual film session at Sunday practice because they wanted to eliminate the memory of Game 3's heartbreaking loss. At that point, LeBron was living in their head rent free, and Game 4 was just a formality. The Cavs won it by a landslide, and it was a sad sight to see. The Raptors looked defeated, deflated, and wiped out with a hopeless, empty look in their eyes. Sure, they were losing to LeBron before, but now they were the number one seed, and he was without Kyrie, and he still swept them. For the whole series, LeBron played at his own tempo and controlled the pace of the game masterfully. Most of the time, he'd just walk the ball, post up somebody smaller, and then cut Toronto's defense like a surgeon. James averaged 34 points, 8 rebounds, and 11 assists for the series on 55% shooting. Do you hear this? Unbelievable respect and much respect to these fans, to this country. This is unbelievable. I've never been a part of something like this in my 13 year career. Uh, this is special. And for the Raptors, 2018 was easily the most disappointing performance of all three series against LeBron. DeRozan attempted nine three pointers in the first two games and missed all of them. He attempted precisely zero in games three and four. DeRozan has played in 14 playoff games against the Cavaliers and has not made a single three across three different series. Toronto's coach Dwayne Casey was fired after the season, which was extremely awkward because he won the Coach of the Year award less than a week before. But because of the embarrassment of LeBronto, he had to go, and so did DeRozan, who got traded to the Spurs. After the last series against the Raptors, somebody changed LeBron's Wikipedia page to say that he's the mayor of Toronto, and a whole bunch of LeBronto memes mocked the Raptors for weeks. It may have been disrespectful, but it was funny because it was true.